Hi, welcome to Madeline's Kitchen. You know, the past several years I've had a few hobbies that I've really enjoyed. I love to do oil painting, watercolor, flower decorating, interior decorating, but the hobby I love the most is cooking. And my family loves eating, so it's a perfect match. This afternoon I'm going to prepare two different veal dishes for you. And I want to give you a few tips about veal. When you purchase your veal, if you have a private butcher, ask him for the lightest, pinkest color veal he has. You don't want your veal to be dark red in color. You want it light. It's very similar to the color of the pink ham or my countertop. Very light. So we're going to begin first with the veal. The simplest thing is you beat the amount of eggs you'll need for the quantity of veal you're preparing. If I prepared eight veal cutlets, I might need three or four eggs. Right now, I've prepared the others here, and I'm just going to take one to show you. I want you to notice how very thin this veal is, paper thin. You dip it into your egg, which has been beaten. Would you mind coming this way? Dip it into the egg, which is beaten. And now we're going to dip that same piece of veal into the seasoned breadcrumbs. Now, you want to cover the veal very well with the breadcrumbs on both sides. And because the veal is so thin, it will definitely be tender. If you don't have the good fortune to have a private butcher and you have to purchase your veal at a supermarket where perhaps they only have available to you the dark color veal, you can still correct this factor by when you prepare your veal and saute it and you put sauce on it. Prior to putting any mozzarella cheese on top of it, you will cover your veal with tin foil and bake it in the oven at 350 degrees for about um, 20 minutes. And that in itself will help that veal become more tender. We don't have that problem today because our veal is nice, light colored, no cartilage, no fat. All right now that we have the veal, one of them I'm going to prepare for you and just fry it or saute it as you would for the veal parmesan. And one I'm going to prepare cordon bleu. So I'm going to take the one that we just now breaded, I'm going to put it on my carving board, and we're going to take the veal, put some grated mozzarella cheese in the center, lay a piece of nice boiled ham on top of it, and proceed to roll it. After you've rolled it, like this, you may dip it again into the egg, this is only going to be to kind of seal it. It's like the glue that holds it together. Dip the bottom part into the egg, and then dip the bottom part again into a little of the breadcrumb. This way, we're going to make a nice seal in the hopes that our cheese will not come out and will stay nice and firm. Now, these two pieces of veal are prepared. One is for cordon bleu, and one is for... Would you come this way, please? One is for the um, veal parmesan. Now I'm going to take them both over to a pan of heated oil over here, which of course I use a cover so that it doesn't spatter. I'm going to submerge this into a very, see how it's boiling? Can you come close? See the bubble? Okay, and we're going to put this in as well. You can prepare the cordon bleu in two ways. You can saute it in a pan as I'm doing now, or you can prepare that cordon bleu by baking it in the oven, which I did earlier. I have a pan of cordon bleu that I baked here. This is the finished results if you bake it. We're going to cover that with a sauce in a few minutes, a different kind of sauce. But right now, let's just continue with this. We're going to turn it over. You want it golden brown. And going to turn. Can you see me turning over the cordon bleu right here in the pan? Can you see that? Okay. Now we're going to put this over it and we'll let that cook for a few moments. I'm shutting off the flame here and we're going to remove the cordon bleu, placing it on some paper towel so it will uh, drip and we'll get rid of all the excess oil. And I'm going to now put that into this pan the other cordon bleus. This one was sautéed and these were baked in the oven. Notice they look basically the same. I prepared a simple sauce which is a butter sauce 
And I'm just going, it's a butter herb sauce that's going on top of this. And I have here, we're going to add this one more piece of veal to the pan for the parmesan. And I will add some more of the tomato sauce. As I may have mentioned earlier, I always have sauce in my refrigerator. This particular pot of sauce I had prepared for um, lasagna, and when I make lasagna, I make little tiny meatballs because it's so much easier to get your meat base. They're small, and you can just cut them in half, and they're ready. And let me see if I have any more cheese. Okay, I'm going to just put this in the oven for another few moments. And that's the cordon bleu. Oh, we have a little extra cheese. Let's use it. Okay. I'll just put it on top of this one. Okay. And that'll warm and bake in a matter of minutes. It'll be nice and hot. And that's the veal cordon bleu and the veal parmesan, which I'm going to serve the veal cordoba here. I'm going to serve it with some lobster ravioli, which at a future date, perhaps I'll show you how to prepare that. And I'm serving it with homemade Caesar salad, which I have prepared my own dressing. I'm going to put it in now. And that's a recipe for another day. I make a large quantity and then I jar it so that during the week, whenever we want Caesar salad, I have enough dressing here for several salads. Now I'm going to put that in here, toss it. In the Caesar salad, I like to put artichoke hearts. I have some um, chick beans as well, and a, croutons, and a generous amount of dressing. I'm going to have a little more. I also shaved some provolone cheese on the top. And I'm going to top that with a little bit more of my grated cheese, grated Parmesan Reggio. And this will be a meal fit for a king. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye for now.